the power rule is also applicable on rational exponents. In fact, it is applicable on any real number exponent. For example, if we want to differentiate the function y equals x raised to 2 thirds, okay, since we have here a power of x, although the exponent is a rational number, we can still make use of the power rule to differentiate this. So the derivative of y with respect to x can be denoted by dy over dx or y prime. Using the power rule, what we do is bring down the exponent, copy the base, and then subtract 1 from the exponent. Now, 2 thirds minus 1 is equal to negative 1 thirds. So it's 2 thirds x raised to negative 1 thirds. Okay, now to simplify our answer, we don't want any negative exponent. So to make the, the exponent negative 1 thirds positive 1 thirds, we have to write x, the power of x in the denominator. So y prime is equal to 2 over 3 x raised to 1 thirds. Okay, this is the derivative of the function. You can, of course, write the x raised to 1 thirds as a radical. And in radical form, that is cube root of x. Another example, when uh, you have a radical function such as fourth root of x. Of course, we can write fourth root of x as x raised to 1 fourth. So every time that you have a radical, you always have to write the radical using a rational exponent. So f of x is equal to x raised to 1 fourth. So now we can differentiate the function using power rule and get f prime of x equals 1 fourth. Bring down exponent, copy the base, and then subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, that would be the derivative of f of x. Simplifying our answer, we'll get 1 fourth x raised to 1 fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. Again, we don't want any negative exponent in our final answer. So f prime of x is equal to 1 over 4 x raised to 3 fourths in the denominator. Okay, this is the derivative of the function. Another example, let's say g of x is equal to cube root of 3x squared. Okay, so writing this, because we have a radical, we have to write this using rational exponents. So this is g of x is actually 3x squared raised to 1 3rd. Okay, now both 3 and x squared are raised to 1 3rd. So that is actually equal to 3 raised to 1 3rd, which is, which is just a constant, and then x squared raised to 1 3rd. So g of x is equal to cube root of 3. Okay, 3 raised to 1 3rd can also be written as cube root of 3 times x raised to 2 3rds. Okay, multiplying um, 2 and 1 3rds in the exponent. Okay, now when we differentiate, since cube root of 3 is just a constant, we can just copy that constant, set aside the constant, and get the derivative of x raised to 2 thirds um, using power rule. Okay, in the power rule, we bring down the exponent, copy the base, and we subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, then we're going to get cube root of 3 times 2 thirds times x raised to negative 1 thirds. All right? So simplifying the final answer, rewriting without a negative exponent, the numerator will contain 2 cube root of 3, just a constant, and then the denominator will contain 3 x raised to positive 1 3rd. Okay, you can write your answer as a radical. Just be consistent whenever the function is written as a radical. Okay, just write your final answer in the form of a radical also. Whenever the given function is written using rational ex exponents, just write your answers also using rational exponents. Just be consistent with the notation. So g prime of x is equal to 2 cube root of 3 over 3 cube root of x. Okay, this is the derivative of the function. Next example. Say um, f of x, capital F of x this time, is equal to square root of 2x 
plus 2 square root of x. Okay, so write the radicals using rational exponents. f of x is equal to uh, 2x raised to 1 half using rational exponent plus 2. Um, just x raised to 1 half. Okay, so in the first term, both 2 and x are raised to 1 half. So we'll have f of x is equal to 2 raised to 1 half times x raised to 1 half plus in the second term only x is raised to 1 half okay so 2 raised to 1 half is square root of 2 which is just a constant square root of 2 x raised to 1 half plus the constant in the second term is 2 x raised to 1 half so we'll just set aside the constants when we differentiate f of x in the first term we set aside square root of 2 and then apply power rule to differentiate x raised to 1 half. Okay, so you'll have um, 1 half x raised to 1 half minus 1. And then in the second term, copy the constant again. Differentiate x raised to 1 half using power rule. Bring down the exponent, copy the base, subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, all we need to do is simplify our final answers. Our final answer, I mean. Um, in the first term, we have square root of 2 over 2. Because square root of 2 times 1 half is square root of 2 over 2. And then x raised to negative 1 half. In the second term, we have 2 times 1 half. That would be equal to 1. And then we have x raised to negative 1 half also. Okay, so we don't, again, we don't want a negative exponent in our final answer. To simplify further, we get Square root of 2 over 2, x raised to 1 half, plus 1 over x raised to 1 half. And in radical form, we'll have the derivative of f of x equal to square root of 2 over 2, square root of x, plus 1 over square root of x. Okay, you can also take the LCD. The LCD is 2 square root of x. So this would be square root of 2 plus um, 2. 2 square root of x divided by square root of x is 2. Okay. And that's it. This is the derivative of the function. Again, the power rule is applicable for uh, any power of the independent variable. May the exponent be a whole number, a rational number, or even a rational number. Say, for example, if we have the function f of x equals x raised to e, where e is a constant. So we can apply the power rule there to differentiate the function f prime of x is equal to e times x. Using applying power rule, we bring down the exponent e, copy the base, subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, since we cannot simplify this answer any further, this will be our final answer, the derivative of the function. Okay. Oh, we can also we can also have pi as the exponent of x. So it's two. Um, given g of x, for example, two um, x raised to pi, where pi is of course a known constant. The derivative of g of x is equal to well, well we we'll just have to set aside the constant, and then apply power rule to differentiate x raised to pi will get pi, so we copy the ba um, bring down the exponent, copy the base, subtract 1 from the exponent. So we'll get uh, g prime is equal to 2 pi x raised to pi minus 1. This is the derivative of the function. I have mentioned in the first video on differentiation that one interpretation of the derivative is it is the slope of a line tangent to the graph of the function. Okay, so let's say, for example, if we want to find the exact value of the derivative of the function at x equals 1, in example number 1, so given f of x equals 3 plus 2x minus x squared, then we just have to find the derivative of the function first. So what is f prime of x given f of x? Okay, the derivative of f of x, f of x has three terms. The first term is just a constant. And again, the derivative of any constant is zero. The derivative of 2x is 
2 times the derivative of x with respect to itself, which is equal to 1, minus the derivative of x squared using power rule is 2x. Okay, so f prime of x is equal to 2 minus 2x. If you want to get the value of f prime at x equals 1, simply substitute 1 for every x in f prime. So f prime of 1 is equal to 2 minus 2 times 1. Okay, so it's equal to 0. 0. So it means to say, so f prime of 1 is equal to 0. So again, one interpretation of the derivative is it means the slope of a line tangent to the graph of the function. So it means to say that at x equals 1, the slope of the tangent line okay, is equal to 0. Now, whenever the slope of a line is equal to 0, it means we have a horizontal line. Now, if we try to graph the function f of x equals 3 plus 2x minus x squared, we'll have a parabola opening downward vertex at 1, 4. Okay, the graph looks somehow like this. So, vertex at 1, 4 there. And then uh, opening downward, okay? Now, please figure out how I manage to graph this um, function. Okay, so we have this number x equals 1. Okay, so at x equals 1, according to the to the derivative, at x equals 1, the value of the derivative of the function is equal to 0. So the slope of the tangent line is 0, meaning to say the tangent line at x equals 1 is a horizontal line. So we have this horizontal line at x equals 0. This is the tangent line to the graph of the curve. Actually, it's tan the point of tangency is the vertex of the parabola, which happens to be at 1, 4. Okay, so the slope of this, the slope of this is equal to zero. Okay, so the derivative of the function at x equals one is equal to zero because the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero at that particular number. So if we want, for example, we want to find the slope. Okay. Find the slope of the tangent line, okay, to the given curve, to the curve at the given point. Say we have for letter A, f of x equals x cubed minus x minus 1, so at the point 1, 1. So what is the slope of the tangent line to the curve? f of x equals x cubed minus, one, uh, minus x minus 1 at the point 1, 1. So what we'll do is um, get the derivative of the function, so f prime of x, using power rule for all the terms, and then derivative of a constant for the last term. Power rule for the derivative of x cubed, it's 3x squared. Minus the derivative of x with respect to itself, it's 1. And then minus the derivative of a constant, which is just 0. So f prime of x is just equal to 3x squared minus 1. So what is the derivative of the function at the point 1, 1? So this is the x-coordinate of, uh, of the point of tangency. This is the y-coordinate. So what we'll do is just get the value of the derivative at x equals 1. So it's 3 times 1 squared minus 1. So it's 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. So f prime of 1 is equal to 2. So the derivative or the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the point 1, 1 is 2. Positive 2. Another example, if you want the slope of the tangent line to the curve, f of x equals 2 minus 3x minus 1 over x at the point with coordinates 1, negative 2. Again, we have to get the derivative of the function first. The derivative of f of x is the derivative of 2 minus 3x minus 1 over x. Okay, so the derivative of 2 is 0 minus the derivative of 3x. So we just copy the constant, 
and the derivative, derivative of x with respect to itself is 1. Now, um, 1 over x can be written as x raised to negative 1. So to avoid using quotient rule to differentiate 1 over x, we'll write it as x raised to negative 1. It's the same thing. So just, we'll just need to use the power rule to differentiate x raised to negative 1. So don't forget minus. The sign is minus. And then using power rule to differentiate x raised to negative 1, you bring down the exponent copy the base, subtract 1 from the exponent, okay? So f prime of x is equal to negative 3. Now minus negative 1 is positive 1. 1 x raised to negative 2. Okay, this is the derivative of the function. And then we want the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the given point with coordinates 1, 2. So what is the value of the derivative at x equals 1. So we'll just take the x-coordinate of the point. We'll, we'll uh, not use the y-coordinate anymore. So it's uh, negative 3 plus x is equal to 1 raised to negative 2. Okay? So it's just uh, negative 3. 1 raised to any number is still 1. So it's plus 1. So f prime of 1 is equal to negative 2. So the slope of the tangent line at, uh, to the curve at the given point is equal to negative 2. So it's slanting downwards. The slope, the tangent line is slanting downwards. So again, if we get the value of the first derivative or the derivative of the function at a specific value of x, then what we're getting is actually the slope of the line tangent to the curve at a given value of x.